Hey there, freaks and sickos. I'm Clark Macbeth, and welcome to my campaign. For those of you who have been tuned completely out, I can understand if you don't know at this point. The last week of Biden's presidential campaign was a complete trash fire. In fact, the last four weeks of it, ever since the debate, it was just nonstop about Biden too old. And in all likelihood, that would have been the next but her emails. And so because of that, he stepped aside. And now Harris is going to be the presumptive nominee. And the effects of that were way more than I initially thought it would be. She is the first black woman to run on a major party platform. And she is a lot more progressive on Biden with pretty much everything. Think of her as like Bernie Sanders, but black and woman. She has even had a more progressive voting record than Bernie Sanders at times. This is the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party, and that made no difference with fundraising. If anything, just the fact that Biden is not going to run again, and will be a one-term president, has just flooded the Democrats' coffers. She's made a ton of PAC and individual donation money. It was like a quarter billion, and I'm sure it's higher now. There are more volunteer sign-ups for what will be more field offices in more states. There might even be one in Warren, Pennsylvania again. A real nothing town could have a Harris office, just like they had an Obama office in 2008, but probably not 2012. Um, she is that kind of candidate. She will be more aggressive on Israel, which is great, because I don't want to have that conversation anymore. I was going to be a guy that was going to defend Biden until Election Day, and now I no longer have to worry about that, and I can be even more vocal with my opinions on uh, Israel than I've already been. Look, uh, if you're a Zionist, it's not anti-Semitic to point out that I believe that is a very faithless point of view. That it is indeed the equivalent of turning your back on God. He told you you were his chosen people, but now you want the secular world to hand that to you and respect it. Nobody is owed this. No nation is owed this. None of you are owed that. Whether you're a Christian in America or a Muslim in Iran. Or a Jewish person in Israel. I do not like uh I do not like theocracy governing at all. The thought of it being over here. I mean, it could have very much happened. We could have, over the Israel-Palestine conflict, a theocratic government under Trump. And Muslims in America would have been deported, which, if Biden had won, horrible things would keep happening in the Middle East. Maybe. I don't know. It's an active situation, so I can't say for certain. But if Harris wins, she's going to tie Netanyahu's hands. She's going to use American weapons at le as leverage so that he can make a more secular society in Israel and tell the Zionists to cut it out. And that is what I want to see. I mean, you're you're looking at a YouTube channel that is run by a guy, this guy, who, one, is running for city council in Maple Grove, and two, 
uh, does not really respect Israel whatsoever. Like, if it were a sec, if it were completely secular, like there, it was not a theocracy. It was not a Zionist state. It was just Israel, the secular government. With a bunch of museums. If I could wave a magic wand and make it that, like the Museum of Faith, presenting an objective view on religion and its impact on the world, including the stuff that people of those faiths don't like. Well, that's what I would want to see out of Israel, but we don't live in a magical world. Uh, if a two-state solution is going to happen, it would have happened under Biden more slowly, and hopefully with Harris, it'll happen a lot more quickly. A two-state solution is seen as the most realistic way to settle the Israel-Palestine conflict, and settled, we should all be wanting. Whether you're Jewish or Muslim, or you're like me, an agnostic, and feel spiritual from time to time, And, uh, you know, to have more of a secular government come out of that in both Israel and Palestine, that's close enough for me. To have freedom of movement, to not have a massive op open-air prison where there were like over a million people and 200,000 of them are dead in what is clearly a genocide. If Netanyahu does see justice, That's going to be the reason why. So I'm glad I don't have to have this difficult conversation with myself and everyone else. How much blood would really be on my hands if I voted for Biden? Well, not as much as on my whole body if Trump were elected. And I just, I didn't want the election to be like that either, but... You know me, I, I see voting as a way to change the momentum of where the world is heading, where society is heading, where America is heading. That's how I see voting. Like, what path do I want to go? Which is the better one? I don't see it as like, here is somebody who could give me everything I want. That's not really a mature way to view politics. And because of that, that is why I tend to show up for every election, every two years at least, I did show up in the primary this year, and in a protest, yes, I am one of the few Democrats that did this, but it's really easy to do in Minnesota. You just pick one. You don't even get to be registered as a party. There's no database where it says who's Republican and who's DFL. A lot of canvassers have to use heuristics and take, make an educated guess, and I think all states should do this from now on. But I digress. I did vote for uh, Nikki Haley just to, just to run some numbers up against Trump and make him feel uncomfortable. I do not like this man. I hate his guts. I will do anything to defeat him, even if it's a little bit morally compromising to my view of the world, because America is the biggest steering wheel of it. And for us to descend into fascism, into another Trump presidency, is just unacceptable. That alone is a good enough reason to support Harris, as well as all the other stuff I said about her not being Biden. It's too bad, though, that Republicans are complete cowards now. That they will not debate her because they know she is better. She is stronger than Biden. And that Trump would very likely lose that debate. She would certainly perform better than Biden did at any of his debates against Trump. And Trump would have a much more difficult time with her, especially with the fact that she is a woman, that she supports reproductive rights, 
on a first-person level. And that she is a prosecutor. Uh, she is like a white-collar cop. She didn't do, as far as I know, she wasn't like a beat cop, but she did do the formal stuff to charge and punish people. And some of those people were white-collar. She knows Trump's type, and now Trump doesn't want to debate her. This is the sum total of why I just don't respect Republicans anymore. It's one thing to be a conservative and say there are some things in society that we might be better off defending. And, you know, I don't blame you. I want every laptop to be as modular as the framework I am running right now. I want people to be able to repair and tinker their stuff. Those are the specs I'm running right now. That shouldn't really be seen as a partisan thing, but it is because... I don't know. Uh, that seems like something we can all agree on. There are conservatives and libertarians who are like, yeah, we should make stuff more modular. Uh, and who are deep within the open source community. A few of whom are furries, but most furries in uh, tech are uh, not libertarians. They are progressives to the bone. I want a strong border, but in the sense that, uh, you know, the kind of treatment I would expect if I overstayed my welcome in Canada sort of situation, or if I were in Europe without my passport. And just squatting somewhere. It should also be strong in the sense that people who apply to be a citizen here should have that processed as quickly as possible. I don't know why it's so slow, but as a co computer scientist, it wouldn't take me very long to find out. And document a report to the federal government about that. But the vibes I'm getting from Trump, the vibes I'm getting from Vance, is that they're just not men of honor. They are unprincipled freaks, as Tim Waltz would put it. They're just in it for power's sake and nothing else. And I doubt they would be very good at that if they won. I don't want some chicken shit. I don't want some chicken shit to be in charge of the country. I'd rather have someone brave enough to stand up to Netanyahu than that. We don't have that right now. But next year, we very much could. Have someone a lot more brave on a lot more things than Trump or Biden. And for that, we can all celebrate. But more importantly, for that, we can all vote. And as always, subscribe if you like, and share if you care.